I was surprised how many I have. Of course, I'm old, so I have more years. I, my feet don't change. I have 22. All right. So, do we get all our dots in? I got. Tw oh, it looks like we got 25. A lot of you have four pairs of shoes. That's interesting. All right. So you should be able to now. I'm going to go ahead and pull my staplet over so you can see it. This looks like yours. We can change the uh, data. Let's do stamp stamp plot. So stamp plot is here. And if we were to copy that down onto our paper, yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you uh, the stem plot. The drop down says stem plot on the graph type. Uh, 868532. Uh, five, so I'm going to go ahead and copy down this stem plot. How many fours are there? Let's see. All right, I'm going to pause the data collection just so. Um, just so it doesn't keep changing on us. All right, let's go back. It just paused data collection. All right. There are actually 12 fours. And two, three, one, two, three. Two, three. Well, someone might have added a four. That's why I paused the data collection. Okay. It's pretty easy to have 28 pairs of shoes, by the way, especially if they're cheap. Not saying their shoes are cheap, but you can get some cheap shoes, right? Yeah. All right. So that's a stem plot. So the other thing you want to do is make sure you make your key. Remember how Jada said we knew it was 7.7%? So we do a key just so people know there's not a decimal here or it doesn't mean hundreds. So the key is, well, and you have it there, it does it. It tends to use the maximum value equals 28. So that way you know how to read it. Now there's one other option on this in terms of a stem plot and you can actually see the split stems do you see the split stems option i'll pull it over so you can see it yes. yeah go ahead and click yes into two groups Ooh, we're gonna i'm gonna do it next to it we're not gonna redo it i'm this one will fit over here somewhere so this one what happened one through four and actually over round. Yeah, so they didn't round per se. The numbers are exactly the same. But might feel like rounding. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have so they did split it up. They have five through nine on the top on the for the uh, second stem. And they have zero through four for the first step. And then we have four, five, six. When you're doing these, you kind of like your uh, stuff to line up. And that's pretty close. And the key is, huh? What do you mean? Why is it? Did you try splitting your stems on your stem plot? 
So go to the staplet. There's a switch there. Guys, was everyone, I'm going to double check that everyone has that STEM plot showing on their data. Yeah. You're not going to do it. Yeah. Split. Yes, it is. Oh, well, it's not like you'll just have me on the bus. You can't see it because you're on the other side. Deshaun, if someone else at your table has it, you can show it. All right. Yes, I do. Oh, no. Okay, so the question we're going to ask is, what percent of the students in class have 10 or more shoes? Now, if you're looking at the staplet, how many data points? We know some people answered more than once. Why do we know? If you go to summary here, what is N? So we have 36 entries on here. Actually, not too many people answered. Because we have 34 kids in this class, plus me, I think we have one extra entry. One extra entry. All right? So the, there are 36 students. That kind of helps, right? And then I'm going to go back now that I know there are 36. So if I want to know what percent have 10 or more, that would be these people, right? And I just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 out of 36, I'm sorry, there we go, have 10 or more. So if I take my calculator, 11 divided by 36, 0 0.306 or 30.6%. So actually it's a pretty big group have 10 or more. Now I'm pretty sure I haven't taught you skew yet. Have I? I haven't mentioned it. That comes up later. So we're going to keep it very simple. We tend to have, it doesn't matter which distribution you look at. It looks like we kind of have one peak at the low numbers and a few high numbers. Would you agree with that? Oh. Now, I haven't taught you outliers, but as far as I can tell, I mean, if you were to guess if they're outliers, not, not really. It doesn't look like it. I will teach you later how to calculate that. So, and then how did it change the distribution? Well, honestly, it, it widened it. Oops, sorry, too far. It's still pretty much the same in this case. Pretty close to the original. Just feels more spread out. Oh, gee, okay. Just feels more spread out. Now, guys, we're almost done, by the way. All right. So I want you to to practice with a comparative stem plot. But before we do that, some of you are going to go, what the heck is a comparative stem plot, especially if you didn't do the lesson. All right. You can close your Chromebooks now. We're done with them. All right. Uh, for the moment, I might let you put your data in there. Okay. So a comparative stem plot is... These are actually, I picked two of my three staff classes that took the test. I'm not going to tell you which is which because I'm not going to say, oh, this period's better than that period. So can you, table one, do you understand the comparative STEM plot up there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what does this eight up here? So if I go, what does that eight mean? It is to 48. Very good. What is uh, that grade right there? Excellent. And what do you notice? So the one on the right for stats class B, that looks like we, what we were just doing, right? Yeah. 
How is stats class A different? It's just like a mirror image. That's it. Does that look very hard? No. No. And here's the good news. I actually created that on Staplet. So if you want to, if you turn the sheet over, you're almost done. Uh, actually, let me do the big ideas. Give me a second. I didn't pull those up. Uh, give me one second. One there. Give me. So the big ideas on this is that the stem is first number. Oh, let me do the. Sorry, you need the dot cam. So the idea is that the stem is the first number. And leaf is the last number. Don't skip stems. So if you actually, let's say on my test grades, I had 70s, then no one made a 60, and then I had 50s. I'd still have that six stem. It would just be empty. Stems. Um, don't forget the key. So if I had you do it on paper, I would be checking that. If we split the stem. Yes, you're, you're good to go. Uh, equal number of possible leaves digits. And that's when you'd want to do it. When you have a lot, really it shows shape more clearly if you don't have a lot big range. And then on back to back. Order leaves uh, from stem out. Okay, two parts, there are two parts to the key. Although the staplet doesn't show it that way. And be careful because it's easy because you're reading backwards, all right? So if you can, tell you what, um, I'm gonna, so that if you can get uh, this started and then we'll have some of you share your answers up here. Oh, sure, I'll leave this up here, but go ahead and if you want to, you can open your Chromebooks if you want to put the data in to the Chromebook, that's fine, into the staplet. Now you're gonna want, to, how many variables do I have here? I mean, how many groups do I have here? Two. So you want two quantitative. You'll go to staplet.com again. And this time go two quantitative variables or two quantitative groups. Sorry, multiple groups. Quantitative for sure. Oh, and the way you can enter data, let me show you how to do that. So if you wanted to start entering data, So two quantitative, uh, one quantitative variable, multiple groups. That's what you want. So you can put the males, the list up here, and the females down here. Tell you what.